Hello and welcome to the Work of Concept, a podcast set to awaken our human consciousness, offer deep insight, inspiration, and encouragement. A safe space to share deeper thoughts, to liberate ourselves, to live a meaningful and purpose-driven life. I am Ifewana. In this episode, Each One Teach One, I discuss issues and topics with guests to help our communities make progress and face forward thoughtfully. In this week's talk, I sat down with my brother, Kit Thomas. He is the director of customer success at Rentley. He has succeeded in cultivating long-standing profitable relationship with key business partners through great communication skills and a collaborative approach to problem solving. He is ambitious to effect positive change. He recently expanded his knowledge base by getting master's degrees in both media management, big data, and machine learning. In our chat, we talked about resilience, opportunity, career insights, and much more. Thank you for joining me, Kate. Thank you for having me, Kingsley. Um, really glad that you're able to join me today. So tell me, how did you end up in Finland? Well... <laughs> or did you end up in Finland? It's a long story. I've heard people say they came for the food and the weather. I came, I came on a mission. My mission, when I, when I told myself it, I said that um, I'm willing to turn over every rock on this planet to find what I'm looking for. If you're going to start, you start at the top. So I went north. I'm here in Finland. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little bit about your, your work and the things you do here now with uh, Rentley. So um, my work now, currently, I'm the director of customer success for a commerce platform. Um, we do renting. We actually empower people to rent tools. Um, as we move further into the, like a more digitalized society, what's happening is that um, people want to buy less, but they still want access to all of those same things. So we're kind of moving trends towards this access-based economy. And there's a lot of things that empower this. You can see like Uber. I don't need to buy a car. I just need a ride in your car or Airbnb. Like, I don't need to buy a house. I just need to rent a room for a couple of days. So this access-based economy is starting to gain traction. And, and that's where our company steps in. What we're doing is we're basically paving the way and allowing companies and people to like be empowered and take advantage of renting online like in store, just having this access economy accessible to everyone. Cool. What was your process like you to actually get into uh, a professional sort of uh, life here in Finland? Was it, was it smooth? Was it, how did it happen? It was not very smooth at all. Yeah, please um, share. It was, it was quite difficult. So um, being who I am, or at least coming from where I came from, I, I came to Finland thinking that they're not ready for me. I mm. am going to take this place over, and I'm going to be the king of the north. Well, well, Finland had other plans for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I've surprise, been, surprise. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Like rude awakening, <laughs> yeah. or just reality sets in. Mm. So when I, I've been here now about seven years, and when I came, there was like a mass wave of like a lot of foreigners coming, um, mm. immigrants coming f- um, because of the, the war that was going on at the time. Mm. And I mean, it was just like a lot of different people. We had people from, from um, Afghanistan, Iraq, um, just a lot of different people coming. Mm-hmm. And there was like an immigration wave. And I, I came in during that time. So I'm coming in. I'm an immigrant. So they put us all together. Mm. The problem with that is that, like, we're not all the same. So, like, one of the things that happened was, like, you come to Finland, they're like, okay, what are you going to do? Jump in this integration program. I said, I don't know the language. I'll go. 
the first day of class I was in there, there was like a lot of guys from Iraq and a lot of guys from Afghanistan. And I, I thought to myself, I'm like, well, hmm, it looks like the reason these people are here is because my country blew up their country. <laughs> maybe they're not going to like an American dude sitting right behind them. So, so when they, they say, hey, everybody say where you're from. I said, hey, my name's Keith. I'm from Canada. Really? I've been using that same thing the whole time. This political instability yeah, yeah, yeah. in my country. Everywhere I go, if I say I'm American, they ask me questions about mm -hmm. politics and this. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm from Canada, people are like, oh, there's no questions. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so how was the experience like for you with, uh, in that situation? Well, you know, it was good. We bonded. I mean, I met a lot of good people. And it's funny because people aren't their politics and mm. people aren't their country. People are people. Mm. So I, I, can, I have friends from all over the world. And you can learn from different people. It doesn't have to be like your same type of people. Um, there's very few people like me here. So it's just it's a matter of just like just being flexible and being malleable and also being able to like close your mouth and listen and learn. For sure. <clears throat> you know, they say that, um, you know, our sort of experience in life mm -hmm. determined um, the lens with which we see our world. Yeah. So um, have you been able to, um, has there been any challenge particularly for you here in Finland? Well, the, the language has definitely been a challenge for me, but, I'm, but whenever there's a challenge, there's also an opportunity. For sure. So what, it, what it's done for me is given me an ability to, to find other ways to communicate. Mm. Rather than being in a bubble, um, you just expose yourself to different things. And there's a lot of people like, that you may not know who go through the same thing you go through. So like, I have a friend and he's French. And he was here for a very long time before I got here. And like Finnish, come moving to Finland, mm. forced him to learn English because it was just a much better go-between language. And it was easier and, and people would like evolve. For me, um, I didn't conquer the Finnish. However, I, do, I understand it. So I may not be able to speak it, but I know what, what's being said. Mm. And then just being able to communicate. There are people who they can't speak or they can't hear, and they still communicate. So we can find ways to communicate amongst each other. Definitely. It's just that, you know, a lot of people like um, the Finnish labor market has been particularly very um, stiff when it comes to taking in people of different background mm -hmm. culturally and, and and then otherwise so that has made it somewhat a lot of uh, kind of challenge it, it has been yeah, a challenge so uh, i don't know what 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 your experience are with those well for, for me I, I can see what you're saying mm. because i know that i i face a lot of those same challenges also mm. like a they don't value the experience you come with from your country mm. And you have to fit into this particular box. Mm. Basically, that box is like almost being Finnish. Mm. Um, but you, you have to take a, take a like look back. Mm. In Finland, it's such a cohesive group of people. There wasn't a big wave of immigration ever. Immigration started in my country from the very beginning. There was just people always coming. So we had the, the skills and the tools to be able to adopt people and just fold them in. But Finland never had that. Their first wave of immigration came in the 80s with people relocating from Vietnam. And then after that, like, um, I think you had the Somalis came. Mm -mm. But it's funny to see this because, I mean, with that much, those many years that have passed, I'm expecting to see maybe Vietnamese people or Somali people at the bank mm. or at the supermarket or mm. anywhere. Mm. But the fact is, you don't see those people. 
you just don't, and, and I don't understand why. There's certain lanes that are opened up to people. Mm. Like, for example, I see a lot of foreigners opening up restaurants. Mm. It seems as though that's kind of a way to get in. Mm. It's, it's almost the same in America, except people have different industries mm. they, 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 their culture gets into. Mm. Like, if you look at the Irish people who first immigrated to the U.S., they became police officers. Mm. Then you had, like... Yeah, you have Vietnamese people, and, and it's like they do nail salons, or Chinese people open Chinese restaurants, or dry cleaners, or Indian people open um, convenience stores. But it's just, it's kind of like almost stereotypical, but it's good to, like, there's a cultural lane you kind of go into. I noticed my, my background is I'm Caribbean American, mm. so my family's from Jamaica. Mm. And... One of the treks is like the Jamaicans come to New York. They go to New York, and then from New York they branch out, or things like that. So there are these cultural waves, but in Finland they don't really have that. It's a very small population, very isolated. So you're faced with this dominant culture, and it's either you like fold into the culture, but many people come here expecting the culture to change for them. And it's really hard to get cultural change unless there's a need. And we as foreigners have more of a need than they have as a, of a need. So I think it's up, the onus is on us, really, to evolve and find where you get in. Like my, my grandfather used to say to me, he said, listen, if a door is closed, I guarantee you there's a window that's open. So it goes to that, that phrase, like, get in where you fit in. Because, mm. like, for example, let's say something foreign that I, I see. Mm. Um, Thai massages. Mm -mm. They seem to be quite popular. Mm -hmm. I think they go to those places, or else there wouldn't be so many of them around. So there are certain things where they'll, like, ease up. For example, construction. Mm. I've been here for a few years now, and I have not seen that many Finnish construction workers. Estonian, all day. But it's just these, it's like the, I don't know, some things are easier for different groups to get into. Mm. So rather than fighting an uphill battle, like, you can get into your lane and then, like, you know, elevate yourself. If mm. you have a dream, don't let anyone stop you. However, there may be a lot of obstacles in your way to achieve your dream. But then it just only makes the dream more like worth having. Talking about dreams, right? Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your take on, you know, um, if you think about the Africans, the, the people of color in this country, mm -hmm. compared to other nationalities, how are we doing? I mean, I think pretty good. I, it's it's hard to say. You can't really just rate people. And On average. Now, Finland's one of these countries where they don't really, they don't count race. How do you mean? They don't really count race in the statistics, in the national statistics. Mm -hmm. So you don't really see a breakdown by race. But you can see, like, since I've been here, I've seen a lot of things change. For example, when I first came here, there was only one barber shop you could go to. Mm. Um, hey, Mr. Pio, what's up, buddy? I'm going to shout him out. <laughs> um, but now there's like there's quite a few. And it only takes one for them for them there to be more. But if you try if you try to push before, especially in business, there's not going to be enough like meat on the bone for everyone to survive. So I've seen I've seen quite a few African restaurants and they look stable. So it's just a matter of like bringing stuff along. I can't say there's more African restaurants than Chinese restaurants, because that's, that, that's definitely not the case. There's definitely more Chinese people. Um, but in terms of like immigration. You think, you think there are more Chinese in Finland than the Africans? If you look at the Somali population, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't 
No, and but that's the thing. They don't yeah, post these, I, I these no numbers. I have no sort of uh, actual uh, yeah. uh, statistics. Now, in, in, <laughs> in my country where they were, where we were, you know, that race is a big issue. Mm. And it's even more of an issue now, it feels as though, since I left. But there are statistics on different groups of people and how they rate compared to the average American population. And usually if a group starts doing really well, they start putting obstacles in the way. Mm. So, I mean, if you think about the, the population of any country in Africa, it could easily overrun Finland. Mm. So they definitely need to pump the brakes on, on a lot of cultures. Like, for example, we're right next door to Russia. One city in Russia could topple the population of this whole country. So they have, there's, a, there's a balance that they have to play. And the, these things have been going on longer than any of us have been here. Mm. So, so now it's opening up. We're going into globalization. But there's a dominant culture that five to seven million people live here. And they have like a, a whole culture mm. that they're trying to preserve. So those changes aren't going to happen very fast. I have this one formula that my mom gave me when I was a really young kid, kid and she continues to prove it to me to, to this day. Mm. But it, it's really simple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it here. Please do. Hard work, determination, equals success. The, like, there's doors that I didn't open for myself that someone opened and pulled me through it. Mm. And why did they open it and pulled me through it? Well, because they saw the work that I was doing. Mm. So it kind of goes to like the work you do in being an impact mm. player. Because you no never know who's noticing you mm. or anything. So even coming here, not speaking Finnish, like whatever it is. Mm. But I'm that guy, it's, it's 4 o'clock, people are ready to go home. I'm like, it's 4 o'clock. Mm. Let's get to work, mm. you know? Mm. So that kind of like mentality, like what do you have in the tank? What do you want? What's the fire? Why is the reason you wake up in the morning? Those things th show through no matter what you do. Mm. So if you're like not accepting things to be mediocre, mm. like I didn't come here to be mediocre. Mm. I didn't come here to like work a job and have someone recognize me. Mm. Like I kind of recognize myself. Mm. So... You just have to go with that. You have to mm. believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe, no one will. And, and I For notice sure. that. I see that here a little bit. Like, I see people, and it's not so much that they were beaten down by life, mm. but it, it's like that self-esteem, mm. that fire is mm. not there. Yeah. Like, you got it. Like, you have to want it. If you don't want it, you're not going to get it. But, you know, it's also different case, you know, uh, when you think or you're coming with a huge amount of uh, expectation, you know, big dreams and, you know, ambitious, you want to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And then people tend not to see your struggle, your, your, your drive, or they often they misinterpret those as well just to suit their sort of, you know, whatever uh, box they want to put people in. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, um, over time, if you don't, if nothing really is just human nature, if nothing really starts, you know, going for you, your, your, your self-esteem and your confidence start to kind of doing goals, start to, it, you know, It does go start down. to die. It yeah. starts to die, you're right. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. but I mean, there, there's like a saying, and, and I, I, look, I look at a lot of, you know, I try to pay attention to people. Mm. I, I, I listen to people who are successful, mm. but I learn a lot from people who failed. Mm. And sometimes people are right there and they give up. Mm. And I don't know why, but it's kind of like maybe, maybe they didn't want it enough. Mm. Maybe they, or just, they gave up. But if you're a soldier, you you know you're not going to give up. Like, mm. they need to kill you mm. for it to be over. Sure. Um, one of my mentors, he told me this. He said, success is a lot like being pregnant. Mm. It's that simple. Mm. You just need to keep going. Mm. Yeah. And it's all about that why. It's that internal drive, how much you want it. And it's something you can't teach people that. 
it's internal. Mm. So if you if you if you want to sit at home and play video games, that's fine. But there's going to be a bill that's being that's going to come due, and you're not going to be ready to pay for it. So, <laughs> so like <laughs> if you don't plan your day, I guarantee you the day has a plan for you. Talking about they having a plan, you know, there is, um, I have a couple of friends, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Nigeria specifically. Okay. Um, they stayed in this country, they worked as hard as anyone, mm -hmm. and they think like, hey man, this is not a place. Mm -hmm. And they left. And they think like, you know, if you're staying around or if you're trying to do stuff here, um, that you, it's more like you're just saying bye to your dream. And I'm like, okay, that is also due to the sort of the external influences that they feel that they cannot control. I, I can see that. Yeah. And it's almost like getting in where you fit in. Yeah. Like the thing is, I, that happens everywhere. So I grew up in Pennsylvania, which mm. is south of New York. Mm. I can't tell you how many people need to go to New York to make their dreams come true. Mm. You don't need, they just feel that way. Mm. I mean, the market here is much smaller. Mm. Depending on what you do, it mm. may or may not be successful. Mm. There's certain economies that, of scale that don't mm. work here. Um, but, it, but it's really up to you, like what you're looking for in life. What, what kind of, yeah, what kind of life do you want to live? What do you do, what do you then say to people, you know, uh, people like us, like you know the, the Africans, people of color in mm -hmm. Finland, uh, looking for a way to navigate around this environment to succeed, to live a fulfilled, meaningful life. What are your what are what are the tools and what are your tools and approaches you recommend for people? So, I mean, honestly, it doesn't appear like they're struggling. They are struggling, all right? Mm. And it's, it's, it's a mis mismatch between what they want and what they can afford. Mm. Um, the system is here is set up in a way where it, it, it's a balance. We don't want anyone really at the top, but we don't let anyone be at the bottom. I, since I've been here, I've yet to walk or step over a homeless person. There, there's no homeless people here. There's no murder. Like, there's none of these bottom things. Mm. But because of that, people don't really want to achieve the top. Um, I, have, I have to say, like, listen. Like, you, like it's, it's personal. They need to sit down with a piece of paper. Sit down with a piece of paper. Write out what you want. You just, it's that simple. You write it out. This is a dream, right? A dream with a date is now a goal. How do you get to the goal? You write out the steps you need to take to get to that goal. Now it's a plan. Now we have something actionable. And that's what you need to do. Take time. Just do a find out what you really like to do. And this place allows you to do that. Like, it's funny, like, in Finland, in the startup scene that I got involved in, um, you can just have an idea and go to the government and they'll give you money. Um, where I come from, if you have an idea and you go to the government, they will laugh you out of the office. <laughs> like... Our startups. Like, like, are you serious? I am serious. Like, um, Apple. Where did Apple start? U.S. Yeah. Do you know where it started? It started in someone's garage. That's what we had. At his mom's house. Yeah. They didn't have to get an, a startup office and some money. No. The way they got money, they went out and sold something. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. You can't put an idea before you put like money in. And it's funny because here you, you kind of get this breathing room. There's breathe like you're not going to be homeless. So why don't you try to hit the top? 
Actually, that's a good point you mentioned now. Let's talk more about the opportunities that mm -hmm. we th we that we didn't or that seems that people haven't even actually utilize it to the fullest. Like you said, that's a massive, massive, massive uh, uh, opportunity right there. Yeah. That if you have a company or if you like a startup, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you have an idea, um, there are always a place to go to say, hey, I have this and I have this idea. Mm -hmm. And there is straight away you have, you know, support. And So is it so that we are not focusing more to the opportunity or we're just... I think it's it, it's probably a lot of fear, mm. and it's not as easy as just going with an idea, mm. going to some guy, mm. and he gives you a stamp of approval, mm. and you get money. Mm. There's a lot of work that goes into this For sure. market research. Mm. Like there, there's, it's it's like a plan. It's a mm. concrete plan you mm. have to create. Um, but where the why comes in mm. and your goal comes in is like when someone tells you no. What are you gonna do? When you get that two hundred and fiftieth no, what are you gonna do then? You know how how far are you willing to fight for this? Are you willing to be like, listen, you need to kill me for this not to happen, mm -hmm. and then you can't be stopped. Maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe you need to like take it, take the no. Be like, why did I get no? Why did I get 250? For every no, you should learn something. Mm. So by the 250th no, you took care of all those other no's ahead of it, and now you may have something. Correct. And that guy's probably going to tell you no again anyway. Right. I like the idea of uh, trying to bring information to people and then also letting people know that there is opportunity here that they can focus on. The last guy I spoke with on this podcast actually was, you know, he talked about the rights, the responsibilities, and then, of course, the opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at the school system, how many of us, how many, how many, how many Africans are actually all see this as, you know, there are, there's something also people don't understand about this education, right? So there are people that are just, you know... Um, even if, if you compare to what is happening now, the mm -hmm. way the whole, uh, the, 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 the modern sort of society, how, how things are evolving, right? Mm -hmm. um, education is not, much, it's not necessarily has to be, you know, the traditional way of, of acquiring skill is already outdated, right? So you can, there are, there are little, little things that you can just pick up, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can gain skill in so many different forms now. That's true. And, and you're easy, right. You're, you're wrong right. With it. You're wrong with it. But but, but people are not like are, are people not really seeing this as an opportunity or or what, what say you? Well, I mean, once again, my my perspective is skewed from like where where I come from. Mm. So, coming from the U.S. and my parents were immigrants, mm. so they were learning the system through me, right and. The one thing that became like evidently clear is education is valuable. It's something that no one can take away from you. Sure. But then you have to look at it like this. People don't know what they don't know. You don't even, you're so bad, you don't even know what you don't know. Mm. So you need to get educated. There's a minimum level of education for like everything. But then there's like education. Mm. Then there's life experience. You can have you can have a PhD in whatever. But that guy might not have any common sense. Mm. He could just I'm just gonna cross the street, get hit by a car. Mm. Like who knows? Mm. Bad stuff happens. But education is it is probably the most important thing that you can do like for yourself. It's not for anybody else. It's really for yourself. I if you're going to go to school more. only to get a degree so that you can work for someone, mm. like, it's only, I mean, yeah, that's fine. But I think the, the purpose of, like, the tool of education is it teaches you how to learn. It teaches, and, and it's guided. Mm. So you have people, and then with that, you build those networks. So you're building your net worth. 
because all those people you're learning with, those are the people that are going to be out there in the market with you. Sure. So you're going to have connections, mm. different companies, different this, whatever it is, but it, it's, it's safe. And then the reason I think it appeals to, or it's appeals to me is because in the U.S. education is very expensive. It's really expensive. So I, I, have, I know countless friends who got into Ivy League schools and they couldn't go because they couldn't afford it. So if you have to calculate like which school you can afford to go to, like that, that's a different conundrum than here where it's, it's already taken care of and I, I don't feel like going. I truly believe in you know, sharing information. Yeah. Um, and that I think is a way for us to, to create a change that we want. I think that when we support one another, it's also a good way to 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 live a, a fulfilled, purposeful life, right? For me, this is particularly uh, interesting because I like to share what I this knowledge, what I this, you know, whatever it is that I I can do to make someone's life better. That's something that gives me some kind of purpose. So, yeah. and I'm happy that you're able to to join me today. Yeah, I'm really grateful and I'm really glad of this platform you have because, I mean, I've always heard them, like people say like, each one teach one. That's mm. something that, that, would, that would be big in the black community. Mm. Like you, got, you have to, to set the groundwork and you have to help mm. the next generation and just help people. And I think here in Finland, there's a lot we can learn from each other, but being so diverse, mm. like, I mean, and coming from so many different experiences and just sharing with one another. It's really good. Um, but I also think there's, a, there's another opportunity that we have because there's, there's a generation of, of kids that are coming up and they're, they're mixed and like biracial kids. And I think those kids are a little bit lost. They're trapped in between two worlds. And it's difficult for them. Every, like, I can see it. I can see it because they don't know which way to turn. And... It's kind of like I, I had a similar experience because in my schools in the U.S., I was one of like few black kids in, in my school. So it was really like you don't know who to turn to or have a group. And I can see these guys falling into some of that trap. So I think that that's definitely something that, that we should do as a community and embrace them because like a tree with no roots is going to fall down. Definitely. So if they don't know where they come from, or even have any experience. Some of these kids, like Finland is their home, that's their mm. language, and they may only have one parent, so they're missing out a whole side of themselves that they may not never be comfortable with. Mm. And that's really not good, and I think it, it's up to us to kind of bridge that gap for them or create a safe space, or even just like an inclusive community where they can feel as though they belong. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, one of the things I would say, like if I could help people, I would just say, you know, don't take no for an answer. And it's really up to you. Like, you can get a hundred no's, but it only takes one yes. And, <laughs> and you're on to the next one. Yeah. You know? So there, there's really no, no, no level in failing, you know? You, you fail. It's a, it's big fail, little fail, you failed. But the main thing is like failure is just like a couple steps before success, you know? So I think we can all, we can all like just learn from each other, um, build a community. We're all builders. We're all here. We're adventurers. I look at everyone who came here from somewhere else as an adventurer mm -hmm. because this is definitely different than what other people mm -hmm. that you may know have experienced. So with that, I mean, take solace and know that you're not alone. Even if you feel alone on, when it's three o'clock and it's dark outside, like, you just, just make you work harder. That's it, just keep the fire burning. Thank you, thank you, Keith, yeah. for joining me. And uh, it's really interesting. I mean, really, I'm really grateful uh, to have you, you know, share your experiences and and your insight with us and as you have heard just keep it simple 
uh, you're not alone. We're about building community to help ourselves, to help our kids. Um, no one is going to do it for us. So we just have to, as we start now, 